The film you are about to see is a dramatization of events that occurred in the early 70s in the hills of Rockton, Pennsylvania. To better explain the events of this film, the producers have included actual archived film and video throughout this film. This footage was acquired by Stacy Peterson, granddaughter of Frank Peterson. He personally archived over 15 hours of film and audio during the time of these events. All dramatized scenes are supported by archived film, audio, photographs, personal diaries, or has related by Frank Peterson himself in his own videos. In the end, what you believe is for you to decide. Yeah, my 18-year-old daughter was out jogging about 10 years ago. Okay. And she came back and she was just white as a ghost, scared. Yeah. I said, what's the matter, Becky? She said, I just saw Bigfoot. I said, are you sure it wasn't a bear? Yeah. She said, no, Dad. She said, I saw Bigfoot. She said, he was like seven foot tall. All right. Did and she then, describe him at all? Or? Well, she didn't, did I recall. So she was, she was scared. Okay. So far from this location, did that happen? About three quarters of a mile. She was just out jogging in the woods and yeah, down the gas line up here. Uh, it happened the early morning, January 1st, and we were coming back from uh, a New Year's party, and we were up on Rockton Mountain, and something ran out in front of us, and it was apparent that it was a bipedal creature, and. Uh, we didn't see the head of the creature, but we did see the rest of its body. I couldn't make out any hair or anything, but I definitely made out arm swing and two feet. And the most distinguishing uh, feature of the thing was it had white feet. So we kind of thought that was odd. And when you guys looked in your rear view, you didn't see anything? Just Oh, no. It it was gone. Um, my husband said that he thought it looked like it wanted to slow down when it got to the wood line. Yeah. And he said, well, maybe it's peeking out at us or something. And I said, I don't care, go, <laughs> you know, yeah. just keep going. And um, I just, I didn't want to be here. Anything at all, no sounds for like maybe a half an hour, a good while. Then it threw a rock from, from that direction. You can see how thick this is. Somehow or other, that rock traveled without hitting any of these branches and deflecting off of anything. It's the most amazing thing. And it landed right here. Like, if, if you would have drew, like, say, a 10-foot circle around where our fire was, it would have landed within that circle. You could hear the rock clipping the leaves as it came through the trees. It sounded like it must have came from 50 yards away. The rock was probably about like that size, maybe like the size of a walnut, maybe bigger, a little bit bigger. And it was quiet again for, for a while, um, maybe like a half hour. My friend Steve, he said, uh, he said, you know what, I'm gonna find out what this thing is. I'm gonna go up there. And before we could talk him out of it, he took off going up, up that direction. And he said that he came back about 10 minutes later he said whatever it was was out distancing him easily. Um, you know, he could he could hear it. He got close enough to it that he could hear it going through the brush. But he said it was going through brush like like nothing, like it wasn't even there. He had uh, 
he said there was no way he could have catch, you know, could have caught up with it. So, uh, so he came back, and uh, you know, the rock throwing, the wood knocking, the, the whooping, whistling calls. Uh, so, you know, for years I I never said it was a Bigfoot, but I mean I don't know what else it could be. Hi, I'm Stan Gordon. Pennsylvania has 44,820 square miles of land area, and it's also the 33rd largest of the 50 states. And throughout Pennsylvania, we have many mountainous ranges as well as thickly wooded forestry regions and much wooded areas. And it's an area that uh, there's been consistent reports from quite a lot of the state of people seeing these strange, hairy, Bigfoot-type creatures. The question remains, of these different regions, is it possible that some type of unknown specimen of hairy man-like or ape-like creatures could exist? We're here in Derry Township, not too far from Latro, Pennsylvania, Westmoreland County. This is an area that historically numerous reports of Bigfoot encounters have been received. Actually reports from the 1950s, very, very active during the 1970s, and many reports in the 1980s, 1990s, and more recent years. And why there's so much activity along this area is something we still don't have an explanation for. Every year, reports continue of people reporting encounters with these strange hairy beasts from throughout Pennsylvania. Welcome to the movie, Mountain Devil, to search for Frank Peterson. I'm Stacy Peterson and my grandfather was Frank Peterson. Back in the 70s, um, my grandfather and a friend of his, Randy Wallace, had an encounter with a wild man or creature. <laughs> um, most would call him Bigfoot. Wait, let me show over. How, how, how far are we back in the woods? Um. About a quarter of a mile off the road. I mean... Originally you couldn't drive back here, right? No, no, of course not. I mean, it's changed a lot. There's, you know, it used to be just, it was all woods. And it was, it was a path, they'd cleared out a path to get here. They'd done themselves, which... It's my grandfather for you, nothing could stop him, clearly. You know, so... It was men and many talents. My name is John Wallace, son of Randy Wallace. And my father and Frank Peterson were old hunting buddies. Back in 1973, they returned, and my father walked to the door, he hung up his rifle, and he never hunted again. Okay, where are we at? Um, this here is the site of where my grandfather's cabin was until it was torn down in 2003. Uh, <laughs> it's changed quite a bit, I mean, since it's been up. A lot of stuff has changed here, but... I mean, this is it, so, it's crazy. It's how really... Many, how many times have you been up here since then? Um, I've been up a few times. It's kind of hard, you know, because I think about my grandfather, and, I mean, it's just, it's really fascinating, and, uh, I mean, I love, I love to be here. It brings back a lot of memories. It's just, it's still kind of hard, so, you know. It started out big footprint and, and this thing looked like a bear but it was it was uh, it was big and covered with hair we didn't really know what it was so you seen like a lot of footprints by the cabin for I I've seen a lot of footprints by the cabin so what I did I wrote down everything I had seen uh, all the entries I had put in was all about footprints because everything I time I went up there was nothing but footprints you filmed a lot of this too, didn't you? Do what? You filmed a lot of it too? Yeah, I did. I did. Took, took a few, some pictures of it. Yeah, I had to. I figured it was, nobody would believe it.
Journal Entry 1. This evening I found a large footprint out back of the cabin. I cannot explain it, nor have I ever seen anything like it. The footprint looked human with five toes, but it measured almost 18 inches in length and almost seven inches wide. I guess what's the, what's the best piece of evidence you ever collected or besides the footprints? I mean, is there any like, footprints? Any hair samples or anything like that? We found some unusual hair samples, but there's nothing you couldn't really identify what it was. You'd see a hair here, hair there, but you really couldn't uh, get anything out of it DNA-wise. But our biggest thing is footprints. The evening. Yeah. That night we came out and we walked all this. We looked for footprints and stuff. Yeah. And we didn't find anything. There was nothing on this trail. The very next morning we woke up and it was about six or seven o'clock in the morning. We took the same walk down and through here. Yeah. And sometime during the night. Yeah. Uh, something walked this trail up and through with its bare feet. Now, mm -hmm. I mean, I guess you could say it looked, they looked human, mm -hmm. uh, but they were odd shaped. Like the, the toes were all bent up and it was just a real goofy looking toe. And it, they were elongated too. Uh, the foot was only about 12 inches long. And what do we measure that stride out to be? Something like three, four feet, yeah, something yeah, like that. Feet in between each. I think it was about four feet in between each like and stuff right like that. Print. Uh, but we did, we, and I, I got to follow them about a mile back in. Uh, they, were, they were lined the whole way across this, all, the, all of them. And uh, then I, every now and again, if you'd walk, I kept on walking that back in there. I kept on finding them, you know, just here and there yeah. in the softer mud and stuff like that. But in this spot here, they're probably about, oh, I don't know, I'm, if I can remember right, about 10 prints going across here. As we're searching, as I'm looking down on the ground right before we're ready to leave, I come across this very unusual footprint. Strangest footprint I ever saw. It's 13 inches long and 8 inches wide and three-toed. It was uh, very well defined. Um, when I found the footprint and the boys were out there and they were all amazed at what we had seen, I got on the radio, called one of my associates, and he came out and we took measurements of it and took photographs and then we made a casting of the footprint. While we're out in the field, investigating this footprint and this report, we got a report for, on our radio that one of our investigators uh, north of Pittsburgh that morning had been investigating an incident where a creature about nine feet tall looked into a window and the police had found some very large footprints in the area. So that was the beginning of this big wave of Bigfoot reports that began to occur throughout Pennsylvania, which actually continued until 1974. There are many reports, even daylight. I mean, one afternoon we had the fire department bloodhound team out searching for the Bigfoot, Bigfoot where these two guys saw it crossing in daylight, crossing the tracks down there. And that night we had to take the search party with the bloodhounds off the Bigfoot to go out and look for a little boy who went looking for a Bigfoot and got lost. I think we possibly could be looking at it. I see some footprints going up the side of that hill, right through the dead center between that power line. What it is, I have no idea. Actually, there's if you look right up above where the other the prints are at, there's another set of prints going up alongside there too. So there's two sets of prints going across there. Is it something? Who knows? Go take a look. It's coming down to where the footprints are showing. <sighs> they look pretty big from down there. Yeah, they do. If you look at it like that there, they look big. Yeah. He's hitting it in a slid. Freeze. Yeah, we, uh, we were down at the bottom of the hill here, and uh, it's difficult to see. But uh, it uh, and and Ron's down there with him. Ron's right? holding post. He's doing a couple wood knocks. Just see if anything comes up after I exit. Oh, Let's go take a look. Then we would truly know if that was possible. If it was deep enough to cast, then you would then the. Inverted impression would give you more detail about what you're looking at, but due to the soil competition, uh, composition, you uh, 
it's hard to say. Because there's not an extensive runoff down through here, I mean, it's not like it's just a mud and, and natural impression right. made by mud. I mean, there's, with all this leaf leaf fodder everywhere, something heavy scuffed, scooted that out. Back of the heel is 16. Let's just do this. There. 16 inches to the heel here. And at the widest spot, 9 inches to the edge here. Where it's edge is 8.5, 9 inches. You can see a, mm -hmm. what was like a toe here. And little splay toe out there. <laughs> You're out there wandering around on Sunday afternoon just enjoying nature. You always have a dollar bill or you leave some money and they're, they're six inches long. You take that and you can mark that for your reference to get an idea how, far, how, how big something is. In this case it was 16. Well those are 18 inches and that's just about right. And you know across there to the edge is nine. So you can use that for a measuring reference. It's a pretty well given size that you can go back later and say, okay, I, I see a reference. Mm -hmm. So that's what we do when we're in the woods and we don't happen to be out here uh, on a Bigfoot research investigation. You're always gonna have something in your pocket like that that's, that's a known reference ground being rocks and a few other things who knows I'm just I'm just saying that's similar yeah uh, can't guarantee it I don't know uh, yeah. I don't know I can't say I'm just saying that it's something out it looks out of place this way I was walking up here and it just I saw a so 16 inches to here to the toe what it looks like a toe splayed out there it's, six, it's almost nine inches across it I don't know. If it is a print, it's it's a really old print. Mm -hmm. If it is a print. some wash over it now. It might have been deeper one time. Could have been. Back into here where where the hill what almost would like look like almost look like what would be a hill. And up in here maybe where the front of the toad were. I mean, if it is something, if this is an impression, which I believe it is, it's about that. Here, Curry. See what we're saying? He's saying maybe possibly a heel. Mm -hmm. And up in here, we're looking like we're 13, 14 yeah. inches, guys. About 14 inches. Let's yeah. let's have a picture of that, Ron. Yeah. Fine. Yeah, that a very good pond. Up a little more, I think. This way? No, up this way. Up this way. Right, right, right. there. Yeah. About seven, seven inches. inches. Okay, so you're 14 by six and a half, seven. Huh. Right here, yeah, I see what you're saying. This will be the heel, this will be the toes. You can almost see the toes right yeah. there. Okay. Where yeah. hit that one. You, you know what though, I'm just thinking, it's, that is not that old though, is it? Pardon no, me, that day? is an old. Day? Well, there's a leaf, the leaf's in there, so. It, here, let me see the camera. Yeah. 69, 68 inches. So about, about, about five, five and a half foot. Five and a half feet. There's toes. Like yeah, it looks right here. Mm -hmm. There's right here. I can put my put, just put my finger right in it. Wow, well, I'm gonna get a better. Possibly, better possible toes. Yeah. Look, see, you see that? See the ground? Oh, I just messed it up. See the ground? Mm -hmm. How it's pushed up there, like. And look, right here with the. Just think about in the back of your foot there when you. Yeah. Well, if it's anything, it's a smaller something. Uh, about 12. We're going to say about 12 inches. Okay. And at the most, four. I'm going to say five and a half, almost six. Okay. Then you're missing Mackie impression. Okay. Mm. It just looks like 
That's mm. a pretty small print, if anything. Well, it, it's just an impression. We can't even say, you know. Right, but it's kind of weird. Definitely something bigger huh. step there than yeah, than than a deer. Because it did depress pretty well, mm -hmm. pretty deep. Yeah, twelve by six, five and a half to six. Pretty big bear or a person. But we're not seeing any other prints of people. No. I don't know. Yeah, I was driving to work one morning, right along this road. It must have been about 6 a.m. And I noticed this black thing on the road, and I thought it was a bear at first because it was dark and looked like some sort of animal. But then as I got a little closer, I realized it was standing on two feet, and it must have been seven feet tall. And when I got even a little closer, it, it was looking down at the road. And I could see it didn't have any hair on its face, but it had sort of stringy, reddish colored hair on its back and on its shoulder blade. And it must have been scared, or even more scared than I was, because it kind of looked at me, and then it turned and went right up this path and disappeared into the woods there. Ever seen anything like that? I've never seen anything like that, and I've seen a lot of bears uh, off in the woods and uh, even out in the road. But that's the first thing I've seen. First time I've seen anything that big. Were you frightened, scared? Or? I wasn't really scared. I'd say startled, uh, puzzled by what it was. Recently, my grandmother had passed away, and my family was cleaning out her house and taking care of her estate when they had found an old military trunk stashed in the basement. When we opened it, we found evidence, journal records, information on the incident that happened in that cabin, and my grandfather had kept it all these years. One thing about my grandfather is he had a great knack of keeping track of things. There really isn't a whole lot for folks to do in this area. Hunting and fishing is what most know. So when Frank and my father stopped hunting, people started to talk. Rumors started. It got to be a bit much for my father. Okay. Uh, can you tell, Frank, can you tell us a little bit about the, the tree stackings and some type of animal that was you've seen in, earlier? Well, the tree stackings is a, uh was built like, like somebody built a teepee. Uh, ain't much I can say about it. I didn't, I didn't know what had built it. Uh, I know, like I said earlier, it wasn't had nothing to do with any people or hunters up in that area. So it had to be something else that had built that uh, teepee, if you want to call it that. You also mentioned something about a, 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 an animal up in a tree. It looked like it had been skinned. Well, it made me think it was uh, it wasn't human that had built it because it was a dead animal up in the tree, and it looked like it was being stored for food near the shelter. And that was very odd. Any odd smells? Yeah, it, 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 it smelled like it's been there for quite a while. Yeah, I'm sure. It did. Make you very uneasy just being in the area? Yeah, it makes me uneasy sometimes even to talk about it. Journal Entry 6. Today, while checking my deer stands, I came across a stick stack. It was about two miles east of the cabin. 
The structure looked man-made. No other evidence of hunters in the area. As I investigated the structure, I noticed there was a foul smell coming from inside. The smell could only be described as rotten eggs. Side note, while investigating the area, I also came across a dead animal hanging from a tree limb. The animal was a small possum. Something had bit it and hung it in the tree. There are animals in the area that could have done this, but after viewing the dead animal, it does not appear so. It appears that something with hands had to have grabbed the animal in this fashion and stuck it in that tree. Cold chill went down my spine after viewing it. This area right here, mm -hmm. you can see them from, from standing here, the, the, the large formation of sticks, and there were hundreds of them. It wasn't just one or, you know, at first you'd think one or two, you'd think it was just a naturally made, but they were, there were hundreds. And it looked like some of the branches had been broken off and put somewhere, uh, you know, to check the branches out, some of them were fresh. Mm -hmm. It was uh, very unusual. What it was, I don't know. Well, I believe it was near fall, my dear. The ground was a little frozen. It was a little hard. The ground was hard. You couldn't uh, distinguish any footprints or anything. We looked. <coughs> but it was just uh, too unusual to be a, a natural occurrence. There was too many of them, and it was just unusual. Some of the branches were brand new, and there wasn't any storms. Mm -hmm. And it just uh, was unusual. A bunch of us were up here in 05 or 06, and we found an area probably about a 75-yard long by 75 yard deep area just littered with them um, that's all you could see was just tons of the tree stackings and within five ten feet of each other probably 30 or 40 of them and we documented took pictures um, studied them to see if they were wind damage or storm damage um, some we could possibly say were storm damage others they looked purposely put there <laughs> and uh, as we were checking it out you know we were making the discussion well this is right along the same power line where the two guys had their sighting. Come back up about two weeks later and all the stackings were gone. And that's not even a fallen tree there, that's just a laid branch. Something that bowed this and anchored it, it's something we find everywhere we go that these, these creatures have been spotted or reported. We believe that these are markers for either other creatures or for them to come back and know that this area means something to them. Uh, the Indians use tree, uh, and Native Americans and the chimpanzees use tree formations to mark uh, territories. Uh, Jane Goodall has uh, attested to that, that this is very similar to what the uh, mountain gorilla does uh, that she studied, uh, make tree formations. Uh, the uh, more intelligent uh, primates use tree formations to mark territory. We don't know all of the meaning behind it, but we find the same similar tree markings right here in this area. The tree canopies that we found, uh, uh, shelters, may, uh, look like a canopy. They do the same thing. They take trees of about anything from this two inch diameter size to this size here, and they bow them. They purposely take these trees, because I can do this, but this one's almost rotten, but they take perp uh, perfectly good, healthy trees, and they bow them into each other They'll take one large tree, anchor it between trees, and make a, a anchor point, center point, and then they bow them all in, and then they have their self a shelter that pretty well conceals anything that's inside of that shelter. And when you go in that shelter, I'm 6'2", I can walk in and just kind of hunch over like that, and there's plenty of room inside these shelters. Uh, I found two uh, very complete large shelters, old, at least a year old, uh, when I was up in uh, Clearfield County in 2010, and uh, last year in 2011, we found a different one within half a mile of the one that I found in 2010. I've always thought that the Bigfoots are always migratory through 
bottom Pittsburgh all the way up to Clearfield County and above. I mean, do you feel like they move around a lot? Well, a very, very interesting point on that is uh, we live in a uh, place called Aliquippa, which is in Beaver County. And, the report, and interesting, the reports that we get there, they almost always run cyclical. They run, they run from, uh, say, beginning of November up until, uh, say, late January, early February, and then they basically stop. One of my theories is I think they're migratory because we have sightings up in this area at certain times of the year, sightings down further south at certain times of the year, like I say, Chestnut Ridge between uh, November and April. Lots of sightings. Other than that, no sightings. Up here, we've had them in the summer, in the spring, and farther north as you get up into New York, you had a Rondax and stuff. They're having them up there in the summer. So I'm, I'm just a theory. I mean, I don't don't have the exact facts, or wish I did. That's a theory that I'm we're pursuing right now. The fact that they're similar to the uh, uh, early man, the hunter gatherers, and they're migratory in their in their travels. Yeah, strange. And, and another thing that's kind of strange is now at this time, uh, and I never heard of the X's or nothing. We just happened to see them and thought, wow, that's kind of weird. Yeah. But on, on Facebook, they've been popping up on Facebook. Everybody's finding these X's. Have you noticed that? And this isn't like where someone would actually look and see it either. You know, it's not like some kids came out here and said, let's make an X see if people find it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It'd be more towards the road there. Yeah. Mm hmm. It's freaky. So I don't know. I really don't know. He was fishing right over by that area right there and saw the figure standing up there as he was fishing and uh, thought it was another guy fishing up here. And there was no other cars parked up here, so he yelled out to it and didn't answer. And he was watching it as it was bending over and splashing water when it would stand up and it was doing it repeatedly. And eventually he got curious and started walking towards it and he called out to it and he got close enough with a flashlight in its face that he could see it was some kind of creature. And it put the uh, arm, typical arm up to block the light, and it just turned and walked away. And he said his reaction was he wasn't terrified or scared, more kind of like awestruck. Mm -hmm. What kind of animal is this? But that happened in 2007 out here, and it was uh, he was a an Iraqi uh, war veteran, injured war veteran. So this is where you seen the creature. You were out here. I was. It was standing over there at the edge of the woods. Can you describe it to me? Like, what did it look like? Or? Well, at first I thought it was a bear standing on its hind legs, and I just watched it for a minute. But then when I really studied it and looked at it close, I realized it was just some type of tall, dark creature, but it was all covered in hair. What, was it, like, looking at you, or was it? Was, it just stood there looking at me for the longest time. What did it do after you seen it? Well... Needless to say, it scared the hell out of me, so after a few minutes, I just ran back into the house and it ran back off into the woods. Have you seen it since? No, well, not really, but several days after the sighting, I just felt like something was watching me from the woods, and I still feel so uneasy about it, even, even today. You don't like being up here, do you? I don't know. It's kind of intimidating, you know. It's it just changed my grandfather's life, so I just it, he was different after this. It wasn't the grandfather that I knew. He was a different person. I know something happened to him. I just don't know what. It's out there somewhere, but I guess I'm not just meant to know.
Journal entry 13. It was late before I got my supper on the fire. While sitting next to the fire, a large stone was thrown in my direction. As I slowly made my way back to the cabin, more rocks were thrown in my direction. I kept the doors locked for the first time ever. I head into the woods and uh, we're going to a location where in October of 07, a uh, park ranger had a, uh, a sighting of some kind of animal or creature um, across an open field and that's where we're heading now is to that field to show you guys exactly what took place. Right in this area here there was something standing and pulling the leaves into its mouth and eating them and uh, as you approach from the field behind us um, it stood up and turned and walked down the embankment and he got to the point where he could see it still on two legs before it dropped the fours and ran off into the woods. And his description was, it looked like one of those jalopy cars with big fat tires on it with the back end raised up when it ran. That's how high up it was. And he saw it for about three or four seconds running down into the brush and then he lost it. And uh, Park Ranger Bob, that we're calling him, is not allowed to talk about the event anymore, is he? Correct. Uh, through continued correspondence with him and talking with him about the, uh, the incident, he asked me to no longer use his full name and not to use the name of the park where we're at right now uh, for publicity purposes. Um, his superiors told him that he wasn't allowed to go public with it and not to talk about it. And uh, incidentally, when he did go to his uh, superiors and ask if there had been reports of Bigfoot creatures or Bigfoot-like creatures in the park, he was told no, there had been no such reports ever submitted, which is untrue because uh, doing further research myself, there have been people who I found out did, in fact, turn in reports to the rangers here at the park. They submitted reports to the rangers themselves. Okay. I, I think that, uh, getting back to what I was telling you, I, I think there's a conspiracy with Bigfoot, with the government. Okay. Um, with all the information over the years that the government has, has amassed, I like that word, on Bigfoot, I sent Freedom of Information requests to the Department of Interior, Bureau of Indian Affairs, National Park Service. Nobody has any information on Bigfoot whatsoever. I think it's being covered up for some reason. Why do you think they'd do that? Well, due to economics, number one, if they find out that Bigfoot does exist, which I think they know, they'd have to close down all the lumber camps. Um, it would have to go on an endangered species list. They already have a plan for that, from my understanding. There's no evidence of any hair or anything in there. That's the last one. It's definitely, definitely twisted. These are the same trees three years ago we looked at, right? And had no, hair. This one. No, this is a different one. This one no, but it was one, one of the trees yeah, over there. Three, Those are up there. Th they're up there. And there's this one. And then this one here has older twist on it. But they were never like that. Mm -hmm. Because we, when we came down here, we found the first couple of trees up on the front of the field. We looked at these other trees, and now the other trees were damaged. Just the two were, the one right there and the one next to it. Now that one's damaged, that one over there is damaged, and then these three back through here could be a bear. I don't know. Why would a bear come up and, and just break certain branches, though? If it is twisted, then something with, with, a, with a thumb had to have done it. Yeah. And it could be people coming down here to mark their area so they don't forget, but you know, I mean, how many times you need to mark it? Yeah. That oh. could be there. I really don't know. They're pretty long. Oh, yeah. No, the white tip on them. Uh-huh. We looked find them like that before. Can you see that? But you can see it has like a sort of a whitish tip on it right down and through here. And now I don't, I'm no hair expert. I don't know what it is. But it's definitely a hair off of something. Looks a little long for bear, to be honest with you. Might be there. Mm -hmm. 
back against there and broke to the bank. I see it. Oh, it is, so it's dumb bear you usually get on a bigger tree like this over there. I don't have to see him do it on a tree. I've bird. seen him be like a, a larger tree. Like That's not bad. Yeah. It gets up against like a the rough bark. Of course, then again, hey, if one invented a better back it would be these. That's the last piece. three to four deer that we drug out of there. Jaw bones, back bones, vertebrae, leg bones. That's all the bones. There's a whole pile of them there. It's, it goes pretty deep. You'll have to get Eric to send you the uh, pictures if he hadn't already done it. Uh, we had them on blue poly tarp. Still burning. How about grabbing that for me? <laughs> you won't get down there if you can. It's clear now. Yeah, Sean. It took Sean about 45 minutes or more to get all those bones. Back in here. There's another cave area down in there. I didn't even try. Head. <laughs> when I was here last March, we found this. Something was occupied, and I didn't come down because there was big piles of scat right here at the opening. What kind of uh -huh. it look like? It, was, it looked like bear, possibly, or uh, what? The pile? It looked like a turd. It looked like pile, of, like big turd. Or something. And I said, I don't know what's in there. Here, you want help? Oh, no. I have a really cool thing here. Right? Could easily be another one. At least one more bone. It looks like the skull. Top of a deer skull in there. Looks like it's the top of a deer skull right inside the entrance here. Although I got a hard time believing that a Bigfoot would be able to squeeze back in here. Oh, yeah. It almost looks like a rock, but I went back and checked it out. I didn't move it or nothing. That's exactly what it was. Oh, boy, I think it just ends back here. It looks to me like it just ends. If you want to get back here to film, let's switch places. I'll be able to get past that pinch out right there. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I can see really good when I look through my camera. see anything back there? Uh, I don't see any more bones uh, laying around just that one. Something uh, comment maybe on like why you think there's no uh, like uh, carcasses of like the Bigfoot bodies. Because you, you guys are talking about how you don't. You well know, we. People don't see them. Yeah it, it, you know, it, it would just all be them. opinion anyway. Right. You know, yeah I mean, that's what it is. My opinion's no better than anybody else. There are no experts. They're just people with more learned opinions. The yeah. thing is, the reason we believe that there's no carcasses is because there's other scavengers that come in behind them, as in other any other natural setting. Uh, there have been scaven uh, carcasses found in other states and other areas down in Tennessee. There was uh, a deer carcass found in the fork of a tree down there. There was a calf that had been stolen off of someone's farm who, that was found uh, torn and left laying in the wooded area. Um, it's not saying there aren't carcasses found, there just rarely are carcasses found. And um, the reason is, if you're not there within a day of the kill, then something else uh, of oper come along and it's an opportunity uh, meal, they're gonna take that carcass and it's gonna be dis destroyed and, and discarded within a couple of days. So that's why they're not hiding it. They're just taking what they need, leaving the rest for the other scavengers in the woods. Mm -hmm. 
All right, what we found up here in uh, Kelly Fella Road was these, what I believe is a freshwater mussel. Uh, it's very perplexing. Don't you agree, Ron? This is perplexing. Mm -hmm. Very. Very. Now, how they got up here. How they got up here. Yeah, because we're pretty far from from water. water. I'm going to say we're a good three miles, three miles from down over the hill mm -hmm. is where the first water is, what would be Anderson Creek. And if you travel maybe two more miles, then you would hit the uh, Dubois Reservoir. So it came from one of the two places. Uh, so uh, and there's no other animals that could have carried it other than them. The cool. only other animal besides a Bigfoot, right. I believe, could carry it. Well, there would actually be two of them. One of them being a uh, a raccoon because it you know it has its hands. The other one being some type of bird. But for them to be you know strewn around more than one, mm -hmm. I mean, it'd take more than one bird, of course. Uh, there, there have been a lot of sightings out west of them on the beaches. Yeah. Clams. But but uh, uh, the as far as the raccoon goes, I believe that the raccoon would have stayed close to the water. It's a it's a rather clean animal, believe it or not, of what it's eating. Mm -hmm. It likes to wash it off, keep it clean. Mm -hmm. So I believe it would have ate it right at the spot. I don't think it would have carried it. Just I think it's an odd thing that we found it up this way. Mm -hmm. The equation together. First we got a uh, we got place for it to, to live. Mm -hmm. We got uh, a food source and two definite water sources just down over the hill, not too far, about within a couple of miles. And we're in an area up sightings. Right? In an area, area sightings. with very little civilization too. Yeah. How many sightings out here? Two, uh, three that we I'm gonna, recorded. That we've that we've actually got to work on. Hmm. Uh, it's about three of them, but I know there's several uh, like uh, historical sightings up hmm. this way. Hmm. And where are we at right now? We're on uh, Rockton Mountain, Kelly Cellar Road. Me and my friend were up here spotting deer one night and uh, saw a Bigfoot here on this power line. It was about uh, seven to eight feet tall, had um, reddish brown hair. So why you carry a gun with you up here now? I'd just rather be safe than sorry. But where did you see it at? You pointed out? It was up there somewhere. Freak you out? Yeah. I uh, I don't really like being here right now. You want to go? I'd prefer. Okay, we can go. Well, we've heard of obviously the rock throwing. We've heard of uh, bluff charges. We've heard, uh, you know, grunting and basically that you know, researchers feel that you know they're doing that just to get you out of their area. I've never heard personally any anyone that's been physically attacked by them other than the Teddy Roosevelt case, the wilderness hunter, where supposedly a trapper was killed by one of them. But uh, I don't believe that they're aggressive, but I also believe that they don't want us in basically their home. So if they are indeed a wild animal, then they can be very unpredictable. So it, it, it is possible, although it's so far the evidence suggests that they aren't. I actually started investigating Bigfoot back in the 1970s when I was a police officer down in Fayette County, Pennsylvania. A um, lot of footprints, a lot of screams, but never saw one. A lot of eyewitness testimony at that time, this was doing flat that uh, back in 73 to 75, that's if you ever talked to Stan, you know, he was big then. Uh, this is the pink box. People have seen these before. And the reason it's pink is because it's my uh, girlfriend's stepdaughter's. <clears throat> is she aware that you took it? She knows, yeah. She doesn't use it anymore. And uh, you plug your iPhone in here. Mm -hmm. uh, through uh, YouTube, I put the baby cry sounds, plug us in, turn us on, and it's just like a loudspeaker. And uh, we used this pink box uh, a couple months or so ago. Or, yeah. And uh, we had, we brought something in. We don't know what it was. We didn't see anything. Like a rock got thrown down here. There, gotcha. I don't speak to you. Do you want to hear something like that? 
thrown. We think we just heard a knock or a rock got thrown. Yeah, um, I can, I, we're having the same thing happen over here. Beast was out peeing, and she said it come walking up right behind her. Gene was outside the car, and he said he could hear him walking right towards him. And they don't have any flare or anything. He said it was coming right out. And they're looking; they can't see anything, but it walked into the clearing down there. I can I can tell exactly where it was, and then in 30 seconds it was like when you. Like the driver's side of my vehicle drove down. I mean, it was like with, it was like right next to us for one second. I thought it was you, Carrie, and then 30 seconds later, if that, it was like I'll show you after they get here because I'm not getting out till they do. Okay, sounds good. But you heard it, right? Because I heard, I heard something. Yeah, it was the stop. Stop. Who works? Stop. Yeah, it sounded like a I'm giant sorry, with I, walking. You know, you read about this, and, I, and I'm scared shitless right now. I heard, the, I heard something moving, but it, it wasn't like, it, it wasn't this. It wasn't a deer. It wasn't like, it was. This is, this is what it's like. That's why I said, turn around, turn around, turn I around. I thought they were slamming their door open and shot. I thought, why she would they be doing that? Because I heard. Which way to come from? Home. It was right here. She was over and then here. 30 seconds later, it was over there. Which Carrie. way did it come from? Right, right over right here. Behind us. Through this that way? This way. Yep. Right, give me a second. If something came through there, get your flare out. And I think that when I heard it, it was probably when it was coming over. Because I only heard like four of us This is a door. I'm just like, yeah. it would go away. Wherever you were at, there was a rock and a twist. It's just 30 seconds later, something was down there. I'm just telling you, I'm coming down the pipe on there. That's why I held back. It sounded like something was going up through there, but I couldn't That's get where I, I couldn't get anything on the flare. I shine over here on the way up. I couldn't get anything on the It was just for a flare. second. It sounded like something was kind of going on at an angle, like that way. Mm -hmm. Like away from us. Okay, I also saw your lights. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm way up here on this side here. On this far side? Yeah. I thought I saw like a flash of eye shot in just for a second. Just something walking by real fast or? It was like, no, it wasn't walking by fast. It was just it was, curious? I was going to the bathroom. I've been holding it all night. <laughs> Down here on my ocean door. He was behind the door and I heard Clunk. heavy. Heavy. He like heavier than this. Like, like a giant. And, I, and I'm like, it sounded like a giant was coming. And like, you could hear the, you could hear it the was so, weeds. And, yeah, and like, so like I'm just like this still. Did you hear it coming from out of over there? No, it was right here. It was already there. Yeah, but yeah. I it heard it. It was like it. right here. But I heard. And you it. heard it too? I, yeah. He was, was out like having five a cigarette. I was standing in front of the door, hmm. and I heard this snap, snap, snap. And she, by this time, she said, and "You I hear said, that?" Carrie, and she mentioned her name, said Carrie, no answer. Well, she got in the car. I flew in the car. I'm getting the flashlight and I'm looking for it. I said, turn around, turn around, get in the car. And she's trying to get me to get in the car. And then 20 maybe seconds, maybe 30, there was the booming down here. I mean, that quick. You heard something going through the weeds, like boom, boom, boom. Yeah, like but something it, going away. Well, see, that it wasn't something. running though. Okay. It was, I mean, I didn't take it as running, did you? Well, I don't think It was think more I, stepping. I don't think I heard that part because Down there. it went that direction, and I heard it coming past my, like, almost like my truck. And see, that's we what I nothing. thought. I thought it was from the other direction, from behind us. Yeah. And we saw nothing, and we and heard, heard, and we smelled nothing, and mm -hmm. felt nothing. It was just... Yeah. Hmm. 
It was after that second. And I don't know if I want to do this ever again. <laughs> I think yeah. by the time I screamed, get in the car, well, I would have taken off. Nothing going? Nope. Yeah. Okay. Nothing. I'm sorry. No, yeah, she needs no heat signatures from walking or anything. I honestly don't know what they were experiencing um, or what, what happened to them, but something did. Um, and it's kind of good that it was experienced by multiple people, not just uh, one or two people. You know, three people uh, witnessed it, heard it. Um, that area has had numerous sightings and experiences and personal encounters. Um, I know I've personally had some experiences up there uh, with uh, wood knocking, rock throwing, uh, hearing something moving through the woods up there, a rather large animal. But there's also bear and deer up there, and, and you know, could that have been what they've heard? We, we don't know. Um, we can't rule anything out at this point. No, no, you've seen, you found footprints. Have you ever had rocks thrown at you? No, I, I, I know a lot of researchers who's, who've had things uh, thrown at them, especially some of the PBS members. I personally, well, yeah, I personally haven't had that happen. Um, and, you know, like I said, tw you know, I've heard tw things in the woods twice. I don't know what they were. I can't say they were a Bigfoot. Um, tree knockings? I, Have you ever had tree knockings? Uh, I've heard, heard, I've heard tree knockings one time. Again, if you don't see what made it, you can't say it's a Bigfoot. You have to, you know, you have to definitely go, go on the straight line there. If you, if, a lot, a lot, that's what does happen with a lot of these things, you know, the people jump to conclusions, well, it must be Bigfoot. We, we don't know it's Bigfoot. Uh, it, it very well may be, but again, we don't know what it is. People ask me, do you believe? And I said, well, I can't rule it. I don't, I can't say I believe for the fact that I've never seen one, but I know that I've seen and I saw pictures of enough evidence that there's something out there we don't know about. Uh, what it is, I don't, I mean, what it is, I don't know. I don't think anybody knows until we actually get proof of one actually exists. But I think one day, especially now, there's more and more people involved with the, especially with the craze going on here in the last couple of years with all the TV shows and stuff. It's, uh, I think it's going to be a matter of time before, just like the panda bear. You know, the panda bear was a mythical creature. I think it was the 50s. The 50s, they found him. And uh, the mountain gorilla. Yeah, the yeah, panda bear was a mythical creature. Until in the 50s, I think it was the 1950s, one was actually captured. Everybody was talking about these black and white bears in the woods in China, but in the forest of China, and they actually found one. It's actually a living, breathing creature. You know, there's times, you know, I spent most of my, well, growing up and, and, and up to now, I, I hunt, I've hunted all my life. Uh, I've never seen anything. So, believe me, there's times when I come out here and I wonder, okay, and, and it's in the back of my head, you know, what we're looking for is just not real. But the fact of the matter, just like Eric said, the people are seeing something. And every now and again, when that little bit of something happens to us, it's just so unexplainable, then, okay, yeah, uh, you know, there, there really might be something out here with us, and that goes to my head, too. Uh, but I, all, I really do, I, if I don't believe in Bigfoot, I believe in the possibility. I believe there's, it's possible. Well, you know, of, of the hundreds of Bigfoot witnesses I've interviewed over the years, mm -hmm. They have come from all walks of life, from, from males and females to young children to people from all kinds of backgrounds, including police officers, um, people in various high positions. And these people had no reason to make up the story. But I can tell you, most of the people, even today, do not wish any publicity. Most of these people have contacted myself and they were very concerned. Many of these had life-changing experiences when they had these encounters because they had encounters with creatures that are not supposed to exist. And, and many of these people had their lives completely changed by what they experienced. He, I'm sure he'll remember. There's either two or three deer and they were all together, all does, and they were, you know, eating, grazing. And he moved, he was looking for more, and he went to the left, and there it was. <laughs> and he wouldn't have even much noticed it except it moved. As soon as the light hit it, 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 it stooped down mm -hmm. to try to get out of that light. And then he, it caught his eye, so he stopped. He went back to it, and he, and he was holding it, and he's watching that thing, and stood up. He went back to the deer, and he went back to that real quick. As soon as he got hit it again, it dropped. It, it stooped down. And it stood back up. 
and it kind of tried to shield the light. And I, I don't think I don't think he exactly knew what we were up there. I mean, with that light shining in his face and stuff, I think he was more curious about the light for a, a minute or so because we probably stood and watched him, sat in that truck and watched him for a minute to a minute and a half, maybe even a little longer than that. You have to state your name for the camera? No, no, I'm not gonna do that. I'm no. people I work with and work, and this is their property. Okay, uh, can you just kind of go over, I guess, what occurred that day? You well. Me and a co-worker of mine were driving down this road, checking gas wells in the area. Mm -hmm. We stopped for lunch. We pulled off the side, we were sitting there eating, you could smell this odor in the air. It's almost like rotten eggs. It kept getting stronger. So we got out and walked down. There was a pond to the west. We walked down there, when we stopped, we seen this big creature just bending down, taking a drink out of the out of the pond. It was big. What did it look like? It was big and brown, hairy, it had an oval-shaped head, ape-like nose, big wide mouth. Was Sca it? Scared the shit right out of us. Was it a bear? Definitely wasn't a bear. That thing had to be seven, eight feet tall. Walked, walked upright, turned around, looked at us, and just kind of meandered off into the woods again. We weren't going down there. We were pretty shook up. We got back in the truck and we we hightailed it out of there and I ain't been back since. Does it, does it really bother you to be back here right now? Yeah, I'm pretty nervous. I don't like being here at all. And you haven't been back here in quite, uh, I don't know, a year or two? Two, about two years and three months. Hmm. I mean, you wouldn't believe it. It was, it was crazy. That thing was something else. The way my grandfather would tell it, it was just a typical hunting trip. Uh, the first night at camp, there was, you know, some drinking, smoking, cards, you know, the typical guy stuff. And, you know, my grandfather had explained to me that they had this rule where if nobody had caught anything before 6 o'clock, they would return to camp. Um, the night of the incident, my grandfather had returned early when he had heard a few shots in the distance. So when you were up there, now tell me a little bit, you and Randy went up there hunting one weekend, right? And I guess uh, he shot at it or something? I guess, can you tell yeah, us about Randy, that? Yeah, Randy, Randy, uh, like I said, I've never seen Randy Moose look past. He had seen it, and whatever he seen, he shot at it. And that's when he came back late that evening. 
I mean, he looked like he was scared. And uh, we knew that night was not an option. We had to wait till daylight to leave. So that's what we did. We waited until daylight. We was hoping the thing would be gone. So I went outside and tried to get my thoughts together and let Randy figure out what he wanted to do. When you're outside, something you you did encounter something, correct? Well, yeah, I went outside and then I come across the uh, I come across his footprint and I looked up and there it was. It came charging right at me, right down at me. I ran like hell. I ran as fast as I could to that cabin. And I think it hanging on and banging on that door like it wanted in real bad. It's going to be dark out shortly. Leaving out here in a pitch black isn't the best idea. What the hell is it? I don't know. We're going to stay here for the night, all right? And we'll leave, I swear we'll leave right in the morning, okay? Are you sure it wasn't a, a bear and you didn't just wound it or something? No, I've never seen anything like this before in my life. Sit down. Hold this. I want to go out. Don't leave the cabin and, and just try to calm down. Frank, don't go out there. I just want to go see if you, if you didn't wound it. It's out there. See anything? I, I heard something. I, I I never heard anything like it in my life, but I definitely heard something. We gotta pack. We gotta get out of here now. No. no, 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 no. Yeah. I, I said, like I said, it's it's. We got that hike in, in the pitch black. Not a good idea. Stick it out. We'll just stick it out. What's gonna happen? We're in here. We're good. Okay. Just. We'll be fine. We'll leave in the morning when it's daylight. We can get out of here. We can see what we're doing. We'll pack our stuff up and get out of here. I don't think it's worth going out there and risking anything.
why they, you, you had to hurt it or something when you shot at it. I mean, it, it's gotta be, it's gotta be at least bleeding. It's worth taking a look around anyway. I just think it's a bad idea. out that morning, we was getting ready to go with daylight, we was going out that morning, and that's when we seen that thing up on the right hand side, looking right down at us. Boy, sun's up. Let's get out of here. Yeah. Right there, right there it is. Shoot! Shoot, Randy, shoot! Well, me and Randy <coughs> fired some shots at him. But we were getting kind of nervous because we didn't know what we were shooting at. We were scared of not knowing what we were shooting at. So Randy and I fired again and we killed him. That's when my heart was thumping and almost jumped right out of my chest. I thought we might have killed a large man, but we didn't. We went up and looked at it. It wasn't a, it wasn't a man. So, uh, which, what, what happened to the thing? Or well, <clears throat> Randy and I decided the right thing to do, we can't leave it there, even though it scared us that night. The right thing to do is be the bury it, even though it had scared us that night. We just couldn't leave it there. It wasn't meant to be seen by common, common folks. So we took the rest of the day off, and that's just what we did. We buried it. Have you been back to the cabin after that? Well, I quit hunting after that day. And after that, me and Randy had uh, buried it, and we never went back to the cabin again. Can you tell us where it's at? Well, I'd rather not. I'd rather leave it alone. <laughs> leave it to be. Me and Randy both can talk that over. It's not meant for common people to see it. We just want to leave, put it to rest. And right now, we're, where are we at? We are at the site um, of where they had stripped you know, this earth, this is where my grandfather's cabin was and where supposedly the creature had been buried. Um, PA officials had come in to investigate and eventually the U.S. Army had moved in. And supposedly, I mean, of course it's just rumor, but they had come in and supposedly seized the creature and never to be seen again, you know, so. Was that rumor though? Um, it was, it was rumor, yeah. I mean, that they found a creature, but I know they were here. I, w I had witnessed it for myself. I didn't get to stay long because they hushed me away. But, I mean, they really could have been here for anything, but I mean, it's no coincidence that this is the site of the incident, so. You have no idea where it could have possibly been buried with all the journal entries, nothing? Um, there was indications of, you know, certain things, but 
I mean, like I said, we tried finding you know shell casings with metal detectors, things like that. Um, but I mean, it was cleaned up pretty good, so there was no discernible evidence of any particular burial site. Your grandfather would never mention it while he was alive? He never mentioned it while he was alive, I think, because it was such a big deal and he wanted to keep it a secret. I mean, it was that important that I, I don't know if he thought maybe the world wasn't ready for it. I believe they are, but I, I don't know. It's not something you like talking about today. I, I really don't like to talk about it. I really don't. So it's hard for me to talk about it. it makes me real uneasy. Change your life completely? Oh yeah. Yeah, it changed it a whole lot. It sure did. The speculations in the film that you've just seen aren't new, nor are the conclusions contained therein. The details of these events have been kept secret for many years, until they were revealed through Frank Peterson's journals and photographs. Through these materials, we can paint a picture of the terrifying events that took place on that mountain. The most compelling evidence of all is the original 8mm film shot by Frank Peterson early that morning. What you're about to see now is the original 8mm film and how it changed two men's lives forever.